Welcome, my fellow weebs of culture. Over the past few weeks, due to a bunch of people getting assaulted by a microscopic beer company, I decided to rediscover some anime that I put on hold for various reasons. One coming to mind would be Bakano, but I'll save that for later. Anyhow, considering I started Black Clover in 2016, and for whatever reason I decided Asta's voice was too painful for me to continue. I mean, I don't shame my past self for doing so, but I do regret not continuing and watching with the community as each episode aired throughout the years. That being said, due to the immense amount of episodes, this quarantine time is the best time just to dive balls deep into 130 plus episodes and finally watch Black Clover. And before I get into the big details, I'll address the overall plot first. I would like to begin with a statement issuing that Black Clover isn't for everyone. I mean, obviously that's the case with every show, but like Fairy Tale and Seven Deadly Sins, I feel like whenever there's a world of magic, the plot can either be tied very well together or just be scattered all over the place. I somewhat enjoyed Seven Deadly Sins as the plot was pretty solid right off the bat with every character having their own sort of title to kind of describe their own power. Like at the very beginning, you could speculate that any individual currently named one of the Seven Deadly Sins was an insanely powerful character rivaled by the leaders of the Holy Knights. And only till later was a power level system created. In my opinion, it was kind of cheesy. Fairy Tale, however, I found to not have much of a coherent plot at the beginning. But similar randomness you might find in a slice of life comedy, just with magic. That being said, I've only watched 19 episodes, so the plot could change very quickly from that point. But my initial statement is, the directives on how each series starts is perhaps the most important thing to the viewer. And if you only like one of these two, I hypothesize you might not like Black Clover. Now, my reason to believe this is because Black Clover has a strong start. It introduces you to the relevant cast, great audio and visual components, besides Asta, yeah, and establish the main character's goals right off the bat, and then you're basically on a ride that you don't know where it's going. They clarify simple things like entrance to the Magic Knights and guild importance only when the events are about to occur, which should make it seem like the show doesn't actually have anything planned and it's just jumping from point to point and all the while the comedy isn't special and the animation literally goes from god to like powerpoint presentation slides and every damn other episode just turns into Naruto Shippuden. Anyways, I do have to say, the show does pride itself in never having a dull moment. It breaks the fourth wall like all the time in that regard. There is always action on the screen and Asta's always cranking out like 300 push-ups. Yeah, he probably does Saitama's workout like three times a day. Anyhow, after some plain character development of pretty much just a cluster of one-dimensional party members, you would think all this time spent on them would go to waste and be absolutely pointless to the overall goal, like in some lesser shows. However, in around episode 25-ish, the series picks up like crazy due to the introduction of a group that opposes the main cast of characters that threatens the main goal. From that moment on, the story builds on the main cast. The Black Bulls and a few others that were introduced in the first 25 episodes or so, the series just starts to slowly improve consistently in terms of action, animation, character development, to the point where the show is just absolutely addicting. The entire cast feels personal, and even though their interests are completely different and relatively one-dimensional, Asta is addicted to working out, Luck and Magna have constant fights, Vanessa being a drunk, Charmy only ever eating, Gosh having a cis complex, Yami constantly taking a dump, Fineral hitting on girls, and Gordon whispering, Noel being royalty, and finally, Grey being, well, uh, Grey. Asta's goals and determination just keeps on rubbing off on everybody and it encourages them to get stronger and want the same thing. It's a crazy beautiful dichotomy seeing these delinquents work together and protect each other as well as the Clover Kingdom. Now what I really want to address greatly is the quality of the Black Clover animation. If you're ever one to watch Shonen, you'd be well aware around the middle of the series the animation just seems to dip in quality and almost every other episode is just lacking in visual spazzazz. With anime, there is this word, the budget. The budget is actually determined beforehand in most cases from what I've heard and typically the main external cause of random poor looking episodes is not lack of money, it's lack of time. Of course, the more the money, the better the show will look and sound, but it won't change midway through suddenly because of it. But anyhow, most people know that, and this doesn't really come to a surprise with a long-running series, yet 
Sadly, with Black Clover, almost every other episode seems to face this. For some reason, between the six animation directors, four of them being chief animation directors, I found this list on Mal, a lot of the bad character designs just get passed down the line without getting caught, and while yes, majority of the time, you can tell it's just a rushed episode, but there are certain times where the key animator directing regular Ensakuga scenes nails the execution, but the animators somehow screw it up due to their own lack of time, skill, or direction. And the last thing I want to blame a bad episode on is the lack of skill, as the work conditions aren't great. I mean, come on, it's Japan. It's known for just throwing Maslow's hierarchy of needs underneath the bus and just making work the only priority. Studio Parrot doesn't really provide the necessary tools for the success of the animation direction, and most of the big scenes are left to the episode directors trying to outsource work to their friends in order to make the episode look nice. Now I don't want to pretend that Black Clover hasn't brought some of the best animation to the table. In my opinion, it absolutely nails magic effects, and it's a lot smoother than One Piece arcs. Occasionally the visuals themselves lack coherency to back up the storyboard and animation planned on the earlier stages, which can feel like a loss, but Black Clover is fairly fast paced when it comes to fights and animation variation that if the episode was bad, you can just rely on the next one to make it up. Okay, so quick addition. So basically what I have here is Black Clover episode 18. And what I want to show you guys is the difference in animation between each scene. So take a look at what Noelle's doing. So she has a magic spell going on here. And if we just zoom up into here, and you take a look at this number over here, that's the frame count. So as I go along with my arrow keys, we can basically count how much frames is in the scene. Typically anime is done by twos, so every new scene is every two frames. That's the standard. If the staff's running behind, what they tend to do is they have it so that the frames will be done by threes or even fours at most. So here, take a look. So this is on 42, 43, 44, 45. So this is actually, I believe this is three frames apart, which is on the lazier side of animation. Not trying to bash any animators out there, but uh, I mean, it generally looks good if you play it. It doesn't look terrible. It looks pretty solid. But when scenes like this come around, this is probably the animation director's fault as the animators didn't put enough in between frames. So there's probably a second here that's supposed to do a frame in between this frame and this frame. And it's just gone. And so Noel just appears out of nowhere. Now you could assume, well, this could be a fast scene. Um, no, because thing is, is that Fast scenes are done by once. So, as you can see here, Mars is whipping his head fairly quickly. What we have here is every frame of his movement, starting now, he's moving his head. And that creates a very fast motion of his face moving. Now, the illusion of even faster motion can be made by skipping frames which is totally fine, but it doesn't create for a smooth movement. Now, what we have here is that Noel is hit with something. When you're hit with something, you should travel at your peak velocity at the beginning, and it should reduce to zero when you when you fall to the ground, basically. Um, you should stop moving. But what happens is Noel gets hit, she starts moving slowly, and then she flies very fast, which is just against the laws of physics. It makes no sense. And this is kind of where the bad animation aspect in Black Clover comes from. So yeah, I hope I explained that all right. Overall, the story is good, and the animation isn't My Hero Academia level or anything, but it still beats looking at paper on occasion. Even though the manga, from the looks of it, surpasses the anime in visual consistency and pacing, it's just a huge part of the show is the opening, the ending, the songs, the visuals, and you know, the voice actors, and the openings and the endings is just some of the best stuff anime has to offer. It almost felt like nothing could ruin my mood as I was so hyped up 
by them. I just had to continue watching. In the end, I'd be confident to give this adaptation from my current standing a solid 7.5 out of 10, which is pretty good in my book. My base standard for good anime is a 7, and if scores are higher than that, I feel like it's doing something right. I know everyone won't feel the same way, but it's all good. I do love hearing others' opinions, and it does help adjust my recommendations to fit specific people. And I hope that this video does the same for you guys. If you guys did like this video, let me know. I'll definitely consider different topics besides an overall series analysis in the future. But as this is the first of its kind on my channel, I decided to make it fairly simple and just speak my mind on this anime. Anyhow guys, be sure to subscribe for future content. I'm trying to post more frequently now. Plan on linking my Patreon and Ko-fi in the description. If you would like to donate, anything is appreciated. As of now, I'll see you weebs later. Bye bye.